So how do you create an entirely new material from the ground up? Or how do you modify a material on the atomic scale to make it have the properties that you want? Creating synthetic materials that have brand new capabilities is the topic of SNCR's March issue, so let's dive in. Scientists at the lab have made significant progress manipulating materials at the nano scale. That is, looking at the fundamental makeup of a material at the scale of one billionth of a meter. Researchers at Lawrence Livermore can actually alter the molecular structure of a material to make it better suited to different situations. The properties of materials depend on their crystal structure. Depending on which structure the atoms are in, the material can have different strength or different corrosion resistance. These important characteristics that are needed for engineering application. For instance, one team at the lab is experimenting with how to make metals that better withstand radiation. This could mean a big step towards more efficient and safer nuclear reactors. Something that may be really important in these experiments is something called solid-solid phase transitions, where a material may not necessarily change from a solid to a gas, but it will change from one kind of solid to another kind of solid. And these two solids have vastly different nanostructures and thus behave differently. The microscope behind me is the first of its kind that actually allows us to observe that phase transformation as it's happening in the material. It's an electron microscope that has a very high time resolution. So now we can acquire images of the process at the nanoscale and at nanosecond time resolution. We're making engineered structures all the time, and we need to understand the materials we choose to make those engineered structures. In order to determine how variations in nanostructure will change the behavior of a material, and to actually see when these changes in nanostructure occur, scientists can use tools like the highly specialized microscope that Jeff mentioned. But lab scientists are also creating and applying highly sensitive computer models and simulations so that they can experiment with different nanostructures and see how it affects the nature of a material without actually having to spend the time and money to physically create it. We use techniques that start at the level of atoms and um, model how the material behaves as it's evolving. So we start with a quantum mechanics model that informs um, the higher level models that we do, which are uh, you know, at the level of atoms and then at the level of continuous materials as the material is, is transforming. So really, what I find very exciting about this project is the combination of these very advanced uh, experimental techniques with the computational power that we're able to bring to understand these materials. Synthetically created nanostructures are being used in biomimetic projects, or those that mimic a process found in nature, like the ability to adapt to changing conditions. For example, Livermore scientists are developing a material that reacts in different ways when exposed to light integrating biological functionality to electronic circuits. On the complete other end of the spectrum, nanostructure research is helping us better understand how lithium ion batteries work. These batteries are found in everything from your laptop computer to an electric car, and this kind of research will drastically improve their function, life, safety, and performance. In a broader picture, nanoscience is just a huge part of the future of scientific research. To learn more about this topic and check out even more really cool details, get your copy of the March issue of SNTR here and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with every issue. Thanks for watching!